one of the most colorful islands in the Caribbean combined with great beaches, food, culture, and friendly people. Welcome to Curaçao. Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 from Curacao. First, I would like to thank this video's sponsor, which is Terra Boutique Hotel. I will leave the link in the description for you to see everything they have to offer. Thanks also to you for supporting my sponsors, which in turn supports me in being able to make more content like this. Enjoy the video. We are here with Jeanette van der Meulen and we are going to learn a little bit more about Terra Boutique Hotel. Hello Jeanette, Hi. Welcome. Hi, welcome. And tell me a little bit how the, the Terra Boutique Hotel started, what was the vision behind this unique hotel? Okay, the vision or we started two years ago with the renovation of this historic building here at Peter Maise Senta. Yes. Uh, it's growing, Peter May is growing, so a lot of boutique hotels are coming to this area of the town and then the owner have this vision of having a different kind of boutique hotel here in Peter May. Yeah. Different because it's not colorful in the way that you know Curacao, yeah. it's a little bit more down to earth, okay, yeah. that's the name Terra, come from earth and the colors in our hotel make it a little bit more cozy because of the Terra colors. We are now going to check out the lobby of this boutique hotel and I'm going to show you around a few things that stood out to me. So we have a nice little sitting area so when you are waiting say for your tours or waiting for other, other guests or other people, someone is going to pick you up, you can hang around in here or even at night it's very nice. You have some magazines also Curacao magazines that you can check out all of the tours here and there's a bathroom here if you need that some books also and one nice touch that I thought that they have like music all over the hotel so you do have like the Alexa in your room also now most of these drinks are free except the alcohol you need to pay for so like a bottle of wine would be like twenty dollars and you would mark it down so any time 24 hours a day you can come and uh, get yourself some drink obviously they have water they got fruits tea coffee which have been here many times more books and all of the cups obviously this is the sitting area for eating so yeah on the outside you have like a sitting area also it's very cozy at night especially with some plants and i wanted to show you guys part of the streets around this neighborhood and from the outside the terra now if you are staying in one of those rooms i have to check which one it is exactly you can have this balcony so at night it's pretty nice to have a beer or something up there from what i understood uh, you guys cater to a certain type of guest uh, can you tell us more about that one yeah we want to cater couples young couples but also old couples that want some privacy yeah. quietness you have the vi vibrant city of Peter Mai. Yes. I call it a city because you have a lot of restaurants, bars, nightclubs, there is a lot of life around you but then at night you have your sanctuary where you can come back, yeah. rest, sleep and have your own privacy. We want to give you a prize with uh, breakfast included for two people. Our rooms, um, everything is for two persons because we're aiming for couples. Yes. Then uh, compli um, complimentary but also continental breakfast is included. It's delivered from a local restaurant. We want to work with the local yeah. uh, entrepreneurs around us and uh, we deliver in a basket and you can have it here where yeah. we're sitting right yeah. now. Very nice. 
that's yes. that's like that's for me that's been like <laughs> The highlight of this hotel to sit here every morning and eat my breakfast with this amazing view that's been like the top. Yes. But also the rooms are very unique. It, you really feel like you're going back in time. Uh -huh. So you guys have done a really nice job here. Yeah, with details. Uh, can you tell us, let's say, we look at the, the beach here. Mm -hmm. I've asked you when I arrived and you guys didn't know this, but if you can actually swim here because the 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 beach does look like the water does look a little bit rough but i have mm -hmm. seen people snorkeling here yes so that's pretty interesting if you are into that so we are now at the lower level the first floor and there is like a very small pool but there is that option if you are into these so i found that to be pretty nice it's not uh, jacuzzi in case you're wondering that's not what it is but we do have some chairs here so it's a, like a common place to be used by all of the guests so the beach side is here you got your where you can sit down and the access to the beach is over here I, I know it's still like a little bit in uh, development so you guys mm -hmm. are still uh, let's say you're not finished with the whole concept. Is. Concept. Yeah. What is still coming up, if we may know? Yes, still coming up is that we have uh, on on the side of the building is a big terrain that we're going to develop. Yes. We're going to make the beach a little bit longer so more people oh, okay. can okay. enjoy the beach. We're going to do some uh, palapas so you can have private massage or uh, events parties small parties dinners and we're gonna build a little bit parking parking space because peter and i there are some days in the night that get really busy so yeah. at least our clients have a place to put their cars in a safety but also yeah comfort way wow that sounds interesting yeah anyway guys i hope you have learned a little bit more about theta boutique so i'm gonna put the link below so you can check it out and yeah i really recommend this place it's super easy you don't really even need a car if you're staying here you can walk around all throughout the day it's True. super safe in this area from True. everything that i've seen yes and yeah let's continue with this video and let's move on and get to the activities today thank you very much thanks to you bye bye, bye. I am here at Porto Mari Beach where it's popular with the two guys or two girls down there. Now many of you may have seen them on the videos from other YouTubers. They have them uh, at the beach. Sometimes they go in and swim. Today they're just being lazy for now. It's early in the morning and we're going to be driving around and visiting some places for you guys to show you. Playa Porto Marí is a beautiful sandy bay to be found on the private estate of Plantages Porto Marí on the west coast. Its white coral sand beach with clear and calm water is a true paradise for water lovers. The unique double reef is easily accessible from the shore, providing a fascinating snorkel and dive site. Because we had a busy day planned, I decided to not swim here, but it sure looked very tempting. We are now at the Museum Cas di Palu Maishi and we're gonna visit this one. It's going to be interesting to learn about how the our ancestors used to live here on these islands. Let's go.
We are here with Damaris and she's going to explain about this place for us. Hi guys, welcome to Museum Kasipali Maishi. My name is Damaris and I'll be your guide for today. We'll be walking for around 30 minutes, I think, but it can be a little bit longer because we are going to participate in different things together as well, okay? So what do uh -oh. we do at this museum? <laughs> we basically give you a little bit of the lives of those that were enslaved post-abolition of slavery. So the abolition happened for us in 1863 and right after it as free people now you had another challenge that you had to face because you don't have any money, you don't have any supplies, the island isn't that green and luscious either so you had to start building up your life from scratch. As they started out the government decided to give these people a piece of land where you can see us standing right now and it was basically a, a gift but it would be the weirdest gift ever because you still had to pay for it by planting different fruits and vegetables. So they did like that but then they saw that if you don't have a fence goats can walk right in and if goats walk right in and they find fruits and vegetables what typically happens? They'll eat them. Yeah. So yeah they decided no we need to create a fence then but no wood in abundance here on the island so they thought let's go out and search what we do have and that is obviously a lot of cacti. And I'm going to show you today as well how we create such a fence. We start off always by chopping down a piece of cactus like you can see over here. But because of its spines, I cannot really grab it with my bare hands. For that purpose, they designed this system over here. In our native language, we call it the chi and the cha. But we also refer to it as the woman and the man. And guess which one does all of the work? The woman. The woman, of course. I'm going to go and show you now. <laughs> Wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you how she goes about it. You grab her, you place her behind the cactus like so. Then the man, just like the laws of nature, would have to insert himself and voila, you can pick up your piece of words and let you do it for yourself too. Okay. Here you go. Okay. Let's see how you do it. And I love starting with men because they never pay attention to whatever you're saying. Let's go. <laughs> see what I mean? No, it has uh -huh. to be crisscross. So this one that you're holding here, one part up and the other section off. Uh -huh. Like that. <laughs> If you join me, you can see a bread oven. Very, very important to us because we love our food here on the island, especially pangsera, which is the bread that we make in this type of oven. We eat it especially on Sundays with soup. And One of the first ways that they used to start cooking here on the island, we can see it right over here. I always call it the stones method because you literally had to create a circle out of your fire stones, then your charcoal and your Dutch oven on top. So the second way that we cook here on the island looks like this. We call this a confo. And from within, you can see the charcoal that we just learned how it was created. You can place some of the old fashioned irons on top of it. And we even have like a, a teapot that you could use on top of it. This is what we call a kerosene stove. You had to pour your kerosene in here and we can see the pipelines and how it goes up. So it's quite easy as well. And then uh, they needed a blender, a mixer, and they thought, no problem, we can create that one as well. This yeah. one is what we call the pali lele. And uh, we use it especially for the okra soup, the bean soup, the cactus soup. And then next to the cactus soup or the okra soup, we eat the funchi, which is quite famous here on the island. Cornmeal, a little bit of salt and water. You need it to stir it with something, so that's why the function of the pali funchi. And after making your funchi, let's say that you're the woman of the house, your husband is a little bit disobedient, you could teach him a thing or two with this one. Never, never. <laughs> That's the preach. Stop lying. <laughs> and then, here on the island, we do eat cactus. Uh, there is different type of cactus though, but the one that we eat is called the kadushi, and it looks like so. Uh, we eat the emerald green part of the cactus that you can see right over here. Once mashed to a similar consistency, we grab this, we place it in a block or in a pot with some uh, water and sea salt and we mix it and we get the green soup, the green cactus soup, we call it the soppy kadushi and we eat it just like that, completely vegan, but it's completely possible for you to add meat to it too. And well, back in the day, it was a process of walking maybe 45 minutes to reach a water well and once you reach, you had to carry your water home. So if I walk 45 minutes, I'm going to try to take as much of water as I possibly can. So maybe two in my hands and then one on top of my head. You go in for your bucket of water, place it in perfect balance. And once balance is found, it's time for you to take your hands down, carry two more buckets, 10 liters per bucket. You can imagine 30 liters in total. And then you can start walking back and forth towards your home. 
Well, what happens if I stumble? The water falls. Falls off. And yeah. imagine stumbling two minutes away from home and you have to walk all the way back. So they decided, no, we're going to start using our hips a little as we walk to give us extra balance. And that's why they say that, you know, black women especially, we have a type of a swing in our walk. It came because we had to carry tons and tons of water on top of our head. Okay? And now, since we're in Curacao and Davey knows this already, I want to see you do it. Yes. It looks good already. That's a good yeah, start. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you find perfect balance once you, you feel it a little bit. You let your hands down. So and now you can start walking. But in your case, we're going to do a little bit of dancing anyways. You know, a little bit of a cha-cha-cha. Hey, 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 hey. Go lower, go lower, hey, go lower. <laughs> awesome. I feel it swinging. <laughs> and basically here at the Washi, what I think is interesting to share with you is that this was a chore done by women. So they would come together in big, big groups. And as you have big groups of women coming together, what typically happens? What? what? That never happens, you know, with women, we just share relevant information Relevant with each information, other. I'm sorry. We That's the right about, word. Yeah, we talk about the weather, things like yeah, that. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but other than that, we do a lot of singing here on the island as well. So I'm going to do one of the songs for you right now so you can get an idea of what it was like back in the day. The song goes like this. Washi kulaba kino polava ya kalimambe ya ya kalimambe ya ya All right so here we are standing in front of a sculpture of Tula and Tula is the leader of the biggest rebellion that the island avenue of the rebellion itself took place in 1795 on August the 17th and it came about because Tula found out that the slaves in the French colony of Haiti got their freedom and he was wondering then that something wasn't quite right because if he's black and they're black as well, how come are they free now and he's still a slave down here? So he basically decided to take up the courage and speak to his slave owner, basically demanding his freedom, which of course he didn't get and that's why the official rebellion started in 1795. To sum it up for you, their intention was to walk towards the city center to have a conversation there with the governor in order to get their freedom. But along the way, as things got violent, um, uh, they lost the battle at Seri Neger, which is nearby here. Uh, but we still place Tula here because we want to share his story and we want him to serve as a motivation, especially for the local people here to start accepting ourselves for the skin color that we have, for the texture of our hair, the proportions of our bodies. But the most important thing that we want to convey is that it's about time that we let go of these. The chains that we still carry mentally, and you can see it in different ways, for example, fear. Fear sometimes of being ourselves or expressing ourselves just as we are. So that's why this quote on top saying, my soul is still alive and chain me in the words of Tula, which should mean that Tula here will only and truly be free the day that we as local people learn to let go of our burdens. Well, so it's going to be another song here, but I'm not going to do it alone. You're going to have to help me sing as well, but it's going to be simple. I'm going to say something and then you reply with a loud ha. Okay, I think okay. with this speak you can do it. You just say ha. Okay, can you do it? But you have to do it loud. Ha. Okay, okay, you're ready. It goes like this. One, two, three. Bati pilong. Ha. So will a pilong. Ha. Batie, batie. Ha. Batia pilong, ha. Sawela pilong, ha. Batia, ha. Batia. Ha. Okay, awesome. So like that, you break down the corn, you take it out to the green table over there, you grind it up, and right now we go inside to see the end result of our ha 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 out here. Okay, <laughs> follow me. That was fun. So we're finally now inside of the county house. As a Casi Palimenishi, we name it to here on the island. Let me share a little bit about its information with you. This one is more than 130 years old, also recognized by the local committee of UNESCO as a heritage spot here on the island. The walls were created out of woven branches of trees, and on top of that, they placed this material over here, which I'm going to show you. It's basically cow manure, and what is so interesting about this is that it has certain toxic gases within it, and because of these gases, you won't ever find any type of mosquitoes, bugs, or insects within the house at all. They don't like the smell, so they don't come and visit you. You had your very own YouTube, as you can see right over here, to play music. Uh, 
And then let me show you about this one too, as I think it's quite important. Uh, this is the Arima Ishichiki, the corn flower. It comes from uh, this over here, biologically called sorghum. We mash it up, grind it, and then it turns into this. This, you can use it for the bread that they created back in the day, for the funchi. Um, you can make uh, oatmeal out of it, pancakes, but it was also the payment that the slaves got during the slavery period here on the island. And we have arrived at our next destination, the Dr. Stein Landhuis. We're gonna visit this one. Let's go. <laughs> Look at this, all of this place. It's got the high roof. So now we are sitting at the back part of this Landhuis where we will have lunch and I'm gonna show you the menu and we're gonna show you obviously the food. It's a very typical Curacao cuisine here and I'm dying to try it. So I was corrected by my guide. She's like, not Curacao cuisine, it's supposed to be Curacao Criollo, Criollo food. Uh, stew, banana, stop banana, stop banana, really? Concomber, concomber, papaya, snake bunch, yambo. Good choice. Tutu, and I'll try to put the ingredients of this one. It's sweet, and the coat is so soft, so tender, and the taste is super good. The criollo sauce, and with the plantain, and a little bit of salad. Good choice. This one was recommended by the, our waitress, and definitely right on. So guys, now we have made a stop here at the National Park of Curacao and we're gonna briefly check this place out. This is the visitor center. I'm gonna go up the hills and check it out. Uh, there are apparently some views and some nice information around here. Now the park is closing. We did arrive at the closing time more or less. And so we underestimated our time eating and everything. But it doesn't matter, we will be driving in and around this park. I do believe it's also a land house. it does look like one. Now what you see over there is the Christoffelberg, that's the highest point of Curacao, that's the highest hill of Curacao. And I was up there a couple of years back, I think 2018. It's a pretty good hike up and you have to do it normally in the morning you have to start early in the morning and it's a beautiful 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 view from up there they do also have donkeys here not uh too many of them i see like three of them at least which is pretty interesting any guess of what this is? Is it a dinosaur that were, was found here on the island of Curacao? Let's check it out. I don't think so. 
it's actually the mighty Moby Dick sibling and one very I did not know if it wasn't for a friend of mine that posted a photo maybe a couple of years ago maybe two or years two years ago or so I had no idea they had this if you are able to spot this here in the park it's like you're extremely lucky there are very very few of them from what I know and very few of them are photographed so maybe with the protection of the park at some point uh, the population of them is going to grow let's hope so but it's pretty pretty strange that on an island like this you would find them uh, roaming around we are driving now in the park we're doing a I don't know if to call it a short drive or not because ho hopefully we don't get lost <laughs> we don't have a map we're relying on the phone's map and I think it'll be okay if not by midnight we're probably out of here <laughs> but anyway um, yeah hopefully we get some some interesting stuff to see soon so we just stopped here to take like a break for a viewpoint here there's another plantation the plantation knip We are now at Playa Kinepa Grande. Now going to get into the water and test this one out for myself. It's been so hot so I really want to freshen up a little bit. It's getting late. It's a late afternoon but <sighs> really want to get into the beach, uh, into the water here. <laughs> into the beach <laughs> I thought the water was gonna be really cold but it's actually really 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 pleasant and super clear oh, this is crazy. This is one of the most popular beaches on the whole island of Curacao. I, from locals, I've heard it's not per se the best beach, but it's certainly popular because of the where we were a moment ago. We were up there. Uh, it's got a great view of this whole beach, and sometimes they even jump, uh, like cliff jumping from that area. I'm not gonna be doing that, guys. I know to disappoint you, but I'm not gonna be doing that. I don't want to get in trouble or any injury but i just want to soak in this one for a moment it's certainly very relaxing after a hot day because the island is so very hot obviously i know this video has been a little bit long but i do hope that with it you get so much information about the island and ideas of places to visit i'm excited for the coming days because i do have a pretty like very heavy schedule the whole day and a lot more surprises for you coming soon it was so nice to spot a turtle here by the way i understood that at this beach normally turtles do not come as often so it's kind of rare to see them here so i hope that with a drone shot you were able to to see it and maybe it came to say hi to say hello to us
Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe as I will have more videos from the beautiful island of Curacao. Thanks again to Tera Boutique Hotel for sponsoring this video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.